Good morning, K5 kids. I am so glad to be here with you again this morning. God has given us another fabulous day to live in, and God has given us another day that, day that we can live in happiness, that we can live in joy as we walk with Him. And let's have a word of prayer as we get started our, our mini study this morning. Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you so much for loving us. No matter how bad a day we are having, no matter what kind of attitude we have, no, ba- no matter what's going on in our life, God, thank you that you love us so very much. Thank you also, God, that we can't hide anything from you, but you know everything. And we ask that you would help to teach us this morning some truth that would help us to live in, for your glory and for your honor. And we want to say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. For a quick review, I just want to remind you again that God has promised to take Israel to the promised land. And you might say, well, what's the promised land? Well, that promised land was the land that God promised to Abraham uh, that he would give his descendants to. So Abraham's descendants were going to go down into Egypt, and after 400 years or so, they're going to come back into this promised land. And we know that as Canaan, as the Bible would talk about, and we would know that as a land flowing with milk and honey. And last week, God did an incredible miracle. Um, Jericho was a, was a big town. It was surrounded by multiple walls. And God said to the, uh, the, the soldiers, just walk around Jericho one time for six days. But on the seventh day, walk around seven times, and God pushed the walls out, and they were able to go in and take the city, and they begin their first, their first adventure of taking possession of that promised land. Well, the next city that they were going to take is called Ai, and Ai was just really small in comparison with big Jericho. So uh, Joshua sent out two spies, and he says, go check out this town called Ai. So the two spies, they go, they come back and says, oh, Ai is just a really, really small small town. Uh, probably two to 3,000 sh- soldiers would, would all that would be needed and uh, shouldn't have any problem at all. So... Joshua sent out 3,000 soldiers, and it was not good. We thought, they thought they would go out there and they would win. It'd be done with. Piece of cake. Not at all. It was sad. The soldiers went, and they ended up getting to Ai, and the soldiers from Ai ended up chasing the Israelite soldiers, and 36 soldiers of Israel died. In Joshua chapter 7... We're going to look at Joshua's reaction to this news. 36 soldiers had died. And in Joshua chapter 7, verse 6, we're going to read a couple verses. Then Joshua tore his clothes and fell face down to the ground before the ark of the Lord. And he remained there till evening. The elders of Israel did the same and sprinkled dust on their head. That tearing of their clothes and putting dust on their head, that was a symbol of great great hurt. Their heart is hurting so bad because of what has happened. And Joshua tore his clothes. He's down there before God. And he thought they were just going to take and go from one city to the next city to the next city. They would entirely take everything. But no, that's not exactly how it, how it works. Then in, in uh, verse 10, we have the Lord talking to Joshua. And the Lord says to Joshua, stand up. What are you doing down on your face? Israel has sinned. They have violated my covenant, which I commanded them to keep. They have taken some of the devoted things they have stolen. They have lied. They have put them with their own possessions. Can you possibly imagine. Now you mean, what do you mean they took some of their own possessions? Well, if you go back to the story of Jericho, you will find that God told Israel, when you go in there and you take this land, especially when you take Jericho, the gold, the silver, the bronze, and the iron, that was supposed to go to the Lord. That was called the first fruit. He was supposed to get the first of the valuable things. And someone took something that they shouldn't have. And so that's what caused all of this problem. Let's go to uh, the first slide. I want to show you something. I'm reading now from uh, verse 12. That is why the Israelites cannot stand against their enemies, because somebody took something that they weren't supposed to take. 
They turn their backs and ran because they have been made liable to destruction. And then on the screen, it has question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. Then it goes on to say, whatever among you is devoted to destruction. You know, there's some really, really sad news there. We're going to go back, and I want to read that again. And I want you to see on the second slide, notice the difference. Could there be anything worse than... I will not be with you anymore. Is there anything more worse than that? That God would no longer be with them. We sin. And we think sin is not such a bad thing. Let me tell you what sin is. If God tells us to do something and we don't do what God tells us to do, That is sin. It might be God told us not to lie, and when we lie, that's a sin. He told us not to cheat, so when we cheat, that's a sin. But also, a sin is not doing what God has asked us to do, and that is like God has asked us to trust Him. When we fail to trust Him, that's a sin. When we find ourselves stewing and fretting and worry, that is a sin, because God says, trust me, I'll take care of you. So that is what sin is. And we don't view sin the same way God does. We uh, live in sin and say, oh, it's not so bad. It's okay. And so it's not as, it's not as a powerful thing to us as, as a de- detriment as it is before God. Anyway, the next morning, God showed Joshua which person it was that sinned and which person it was that brought a defeat to 3,000 soldiers and, and what, what man it was that... Um, cause God not to be on their side anymore. And God pointed out Achan. He showed him Achan. And I'd like to go to the conversation they have on our next slide. Joshua 7, 19, it says, Then Joshua said to Achan, My son, give glory to the Lord, the God of Israel, and honor him. Tell me what you have done. Do not hide it from me. And Achan replied, It is true. I have sinned against the Lord, the God of Israel. This is what I have done. When I saw in the plunder a beautiful robe from Babylonia, 200 shekels of silver and a bar of gold weighing 50 shekels, I coveted them and I took them and they are hidden in the ground inside my tent. So Achan admitted that he had done wrong. He admitted that he had sinned. Achan probably thought that he could get away with it. No one's looking. No one's going to know the difference. How is anybody going to see what's going on? But I want you to know that when we sin, it will come back and bite us. I want to read to you uh, Numbers 32, 23. And this will show up as a slide as, as well. Numbers 32, 23. Moses is talking to the soldiers of, of the Reubenites and the Gadites. And the soldiers are promising, saying, we will come and we will, we will serve as warriors until the entire land is taken. And Moses says to him, but if you do not do as you have said, you will be sinning against the Lord, and you may be sure that your sins will find you out. God knows everything, and the sins will find us out. Another verse, our next slide I want you to look at is uh, Psalms 90, verse 8. And Moses is talking here in Psalms 90, and he's talking to God. And it says, and you, God, have set our iniquities before you. Our secret sins in the light of your presence. See, God has an attribute or he has a character, a quality about him that you and I don't have. And that one of them is, is that he is omnipresent. And we have talked about that before. Omnipresent means that God is everywhere all of the time. So if you crawl under your covers at night and you choose to think bad thoughts about your brother, your sister, or your mom, or your dad, God is there with you. If you're out there in the woods all by yourself and you decide to do something you're not supposed to do, God is there right right there with you, and God knows that. And the other quality that we need to remember that God is omniscient, and that talks about God knows everything. 
God knows everything from the very past. He knows everything that's going to happen today, and he's going to know everything that's going to happen in the future. And imagine all of that knowing everything in the entire world, not only in the entire world, but in the depths of the ocean. He knows what everything's going on down there, even up the angels and the evil spirits. He knows everything there is to know about everything, so we cannot escape God. He knows everything. Now, I want to show you a little bit here. I have some 7-Up, and I'm going to take this 7-Up, and I'm going to pour it into our container. And this, this represents God knows everything. We're just going to dump a bunch of this in here. Nice and foamy. Now, we could use the Coke, too. We could use the Coke because that would show us that we're trying to hide from our sins. But I want to show you that God sees everything. Now, I have some buttons here, and these buttons represent different sins. So it might be lying, it might be cheating, it might be disobeying mom and dad, it might be saying things we shouldn't say, it might be, I hate you, brother and sister, it might be a number of different things that begin to happen. And... What's going to happen? As that carbonation builds bubbles around the buttons, it's going to rise it to the surface. Now, you probably didn't see one, but the, the green one was the first one to appear. Can you see that? And then as more come up, oh, there they are. Some more are going to come up. So it goes to show us that we can't hide from God in our sins. God sees all. He knows all. And we know that God... It's pretty cool, isn't it? So Achan, Achan's sin affects all of Israel. All of the nation of Israel is affected. God is no longer with the Israelites. He was no longer going to fight for them. 36 men died. Can you imagine the families of those 36, those 36 men that died because of Achan's sin? 36 men. Sin does have his effect. And also what happens to Achan's family? Sin has an effect. You know, our sins might not be as devastating as as Achan's sin, but when we sin, it damages our relationship with God. It damages our, our relationship with our brothers and sisters and our moms and dads and our friends. Sin sin has that effect. And not only does it hurt us, it hurts others, but you know what? It limits what we are able to do in our own strength and our power because we need God's help in order to do the things that he has asked us and called us to do. And sin devastates those kinds of things. Did you notice when the conversation was happening between Joshua and Achan that uh, Joshua said to Achan, give glory to God, give honor to God, and confess what you have done. See, when we sin, and when we come and we ask God to forgive us of our sin, that we are giving God glory. We are honoring, glo- we are honoring God because we are saying, God, you are right and I am wrong. What, you're, what you want me to do, I'm going to do it. And when I fail, I confess that sin And God continues to love us and cherish and care for us. And so it is a good thing to confess our sin because it gives him glory. It gives him honor. It gives him the things that he has asked us to do. Let's go to the last slide. You know, we have a promise from God. And that promise is if we sin, God will forgive us. Because in 1 John 1, 9, it says, if we confess our sins, if we tell God the sins that, not a generic prayer that says, oh God, forgive me for I sinned today. No, if we tell God those things that we did, God, I lied today. I maybe, I disobeyed mom or dad today. Or maybe you had some bad thoughts about your brother or sister today. When we name those sins, the Bible tells us that he will forgive us of those sins. Do you want to hear some really, really good news? Now, let's look at Achan again just for a moment. And Achan, he stole some things, and his punishment for that stealing and taking those things for himself, it was that he was stoned. He was killed because of the sin that he did. 
Aren't you glad that you and I aren't killed when we sin? You see, when Jesus came and he died on the cross, instead of me having to die for that sins that I committed, Jesus came and he died for those sins that I committed. And he took my sin and he took your sin and he went to the cross and it was judged by God and God judged him and he died. The penalty of sin is death. And Jesus took that penalty and he's the one that died on the cross instead of me. That's great news. You know, we sin every day. I don't care whether what, who we are, we sin all the time. And whether it's not trusting God anymore or whether it's saying things that aren't true or whether it's saying things that aren't very, very uh, nice to other people, we sin every day. And every day we have to go to God and say, God, will you please forgive me for I have sinned? And would you take those sins and wash me clean and make me white as snow again? You know, we, there's something that we do in our community. There's something that we do in our community over and over again, and that is communion. And communion is a time to be reminded of the fact that I don't have to die for the sins that I committed, but Jesus died in my place. So when we take that cup and we drink that cup, that reminds us of what Jesus did for us on the cross. And we take that cracker, we take that piece of bread, or we take that bit of fig newton or whatever we're taking, and we take that, it reminds us of the fact that I didn't have to die for my sin, but Jesus died on that for my sin. And that gives me hope, and that gives me joy, and that gives me thanksgiving, and I can love God so much more and deeper for what Jesus has done for us. It's an amazing thing that our sins can be forgiven. Can you be imagine what it must have been like for, for Joshua and the people to realize that God wasn't going to be with them anymore? Can you imagine what that would be for us if we sinned that God wouldn't be with us anymore? How lost we would be. We would have no joy. We would have no peace. We would have no excuse excitement, enthusiasm for life. But Jesus died in order that my sins would be forgiven and that I can continue to come and and he lives within me and he gives me joy and he gives me peace. God has blessed us in such an amazing way by dying on the cross and he has given us a wonderful new life. Let's have a word of prayer. God, I just want to say thank you for the story of Achan that reminds us of the fact that we don't have to die for our sins. That you died on the cross and you take our sins away and that you wash them and that we stand before you as clean and whole as if we had even never sinned. We thank you for forgiving us. We thank you that uh, you love us again. Thank you for that plan of salvation, that plan of redemption that gives us hope and it gives us a future and it gives us a way that we can live in joy and in peace. And we are just so thankful for what you've done for us. And we praise your name in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.